from the very beginning, we knew that we intended to build um, the best factoring company for carriers out there. The trucking industry is crazy right now and being a broker can be stressful. Managing your invoices, billing, collecting, carrier base, and cash flow can feel like an impossible task. But I can tell you, OTR Solutions has figured out the impossible. They eliminate cash flow problems for carrier payments and ensure margin funding in just 24 hours with broker invoice factoring. OTR Solutions takes care of billing and collection processes with your shippers. And with lightning quick and accurate invoicing, your customers will never need another broker to handle their freight needs. Kick back, relax, and let OTR take care of your brokerage. If you want to know more, and I hope you do, check them out at otrsolutions.com slash freight hyphen caviar to see what they can do for your business. Or give them a call. They love to talk to brokers at 770-882-0124. We've partnered with Ascent TMS, the world's most popular and top-rated transportation management system. It's the ultimate tool for all your freight needs. You can use our referral code RA hyphen freight caviar exclamation point to receive three months of Ascent TMS for free. It only takes 20 seconds to sign up and no credit card is required. You can click the link below to learn more. Grace, you've been with OTR since its inception in 2011. Can you talk about the early days at OTR and how the company has evolved over time? Sure. Yeah, it's um it's been an amazing ride. You know, it's uh we started the company in 2011. Um, I was actually hired uh, at NTG, Nolan Transportation Group, um, originally to be, you know, Kevin Nolan had mentioned he founded both of these companies, as as you know. Um, and originally, I thought I would be the first female freight broker at NTG. But ultimately, what had happened was, um, you know, we realized that the stack of checks going out directly to carriers was this big. And the stack of checks going out to factoring companies was this big, except for every carrier that called in seemed to hate the factoring company they were working with. We thought, you know what, we can probably do this better. Um, I had spent five and a half years as an auditor before I got to NTG. And that was through a friend, you know, that was actually through a family member, you know, like most small businesses when they're getting going, you're working with friends and family and people who are invested in the idea. And, very much so, um, you know, my cousin made the introduction. He was freight brokering for Kevin. He made the introduction and I came on with Kevin to help with accounting, recruiting, um, HR, which if you know me at all, that's hilarious. Um, thank God for HR, but I don't want to be it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and so I thought I'd be the first freight broker, but that didn't happen. We ended up starting OTR Capital in 2011. And I'm looking over, I'm thinking, you know, auditing the bills. Should we buy it? Shouldn't we buy it? There were five of us and a whiteboard and, you know, one or two carriers to start. And truthfully, you know, at that point, we really were like, we're going to do something big. You know, from the very beginning, we knew that we intended to build um, the best factoring company for carriers out there. Um, you know, and we would come in in the morning and we would invoice and then we would collect and then we would sell before we went home. We did everything. And, um, you know, we were on fold up tables and we passed a can for coffee. Um, <laughs> you know, we joked that like office supplies were a luxury. I mean, I can't tell you, like, I still even have it, the big pens. Mm -hmm. Having a nice gel pen was not something we would spend the money on. Um, you know, post-it notes was a joke that was, you know, if you had, if you had to throw it away, you didn't use it. Um, so it, it, it was scrappy and it was fun wow. and it was exciting. And we recognized that every single carrier that we touch was a referral opportunity for another piece of business. And we treated, we treated it as such and took really good care of the carriers and, uh, began to build a really solid business. Wow. That's, that's really cool. So now it's 12 years in into OTR. Mm -hmm. uh, can you kind of take us through, I guess, the years a little bit? Uh, when when did you feel like that you're actually making like you felt like a big impact? I know that in the beginning you, you felt that this was gonna, this will be something big. 
But when did like the ball really start rolling? And when did you see like that you're actually like it's it's growing rapidly? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, you know, when we look back, um we obviously didn't have the money for marketing and you know, we didn't really um we didn't have the ability to get to these conferences. And so it it was about word of mouth. And I think we were also trying to figure out how do we differentiate ourselves from the other factoring companies. And part of that was that we realized most of the other factoring companies were really only wanting to deal with the midsize, you know, 20 plus truck, midsize trucking, you know, the power units. And nobody really wanted to serve the owner operators and the small three to five truck range, which is 90% of the independent trucking companies that are out there. Yeah, exactly. Right? And it's mm-hmm. it's yeah. like, that's who needs to be taken care of. And so we really decided to focus on that. One of the things that we recognized too, is that in the beginning, everybody was paying off of original PODs. Okay. They would, the carriers would actually go into the, you know, the gas stations or the um, fuel stations and they would trip pack the originals. Yeah. And that's what you would get, Bob, you remember this is, and everybody was yeah, yeah. in the envelope and you'd ship it overnight. And then you would get funded. We thought this is crazy. Like, we know that the freight's delivered. The brokers know the freight's delivered. It's just a way to extend having to pay the carrier even longer. And so yeah. we were one of the first factoring companies to actually pay off of copies to the point the carrier's like, wait, you do what? You pay, you know, you could fax it or scan it. Cam scanner was a big one in the beginning. And then we yeah. decided to build the mobile app which we were the first factoring company with a mobile app that allowed you to take a picture of your POD and send it in. And at that point, I think that that's when we really put our name, you know, on the map as far as, wow, they're doing something a little different. My factoring company will get me paid. And they're giving me as a small carrier access to technology that will help me get paid faster. Um, You know, I used to say if people weren't factoring, if carriers weren't factoring with OTR, it's just because they haven't heard of us yet. Because once you came to work with us, you understood that we were going to take care of you and make sure you got paid. Um, and so, you know, I'd probably say around 2013, 14. I mean, we, here's the thing. We always, this team that I work with um, day in and day out, we are so dedicated. And when we say we're going to do something, we do it. Um, and so, you know, continuing to evolve and listen to the carriers um, and what they needed Uh I think is what really drove our success because honestly, we're 12 years in and, you know, we didn't even really have marketing until maybe six years ago, true marketing. Right. And even, Mm -hmm. even a very, you know, even a great marketing team, which probably like four or five years ago. And what I mean by that is not just trying to make sure our applications all match and, you know, our website looks solid, like, true e-sales and, you know, dedicated um, sales efforts through marketing. And so it's been, it you know, we really were, had boots on the ground and voices from the carriers themselves saying, you need to go to OTR. Hey there, amazing listeners. If you're enjoying what you're hearing in our podcast, we need your support. It will only take a moment, but it would mean the world to us. Please make sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to share with one of your friends that would enjoy our content. Your engagement helps us reach more people and bring more awesome episodes to you. Thanks a million. And thanks for being part of the podcast community. That's That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Word of mouth spread. And now it it led to being able to invest in marketing. And uh, I know that OTR is also the headline sponsor of Freight Fest uh, from Ramel. And we had Ramel like last month in the podcast. And actually Ramel sponsored some posts on Bob's page and same with Freight Caviar. So uh, it's really cool to be able to see that. Uh, Same with just what Ramel did with Freyfest and having OTR sponsor that, I think that's amazing. Uh, so perhaps OTR for propelling that in our industry. Forward. Yes. That's, that's Thanks. Really I mean, you know, we, years ago, we would do something internally for our clients called happy trucking new year. <laughs> and we would bring all the clients in for free and, and, and we would book a, you know, this conference room at a hotel and just say, everybody come and we'll give education. And then obviously COVID happened. Um, And at the time I met Ramel. And one of the things I love about Ramel is that he's actually in it with everybody that's out there. 
running mm-hmm. the freight, making the logistics industry, you know, run? How are you doing it? How are you finding s- success? It was so, for so long, everybody held their secrets, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. And for the first time, he gets people really talking about, hey, you know, this is at the dispatcher level and at the yeah. carrier and at the box truck level. Like, when people aren't really having a lot of those conversations about how they're doing it. So it was like, Oh, this is my secret, you know? Um, and we absolutely love that because there's enough business out there for everyone. And certainly the smaller um, trucking companies and everybody needs to understand, like, how can I do better? How can I be better? Like why mm-hmm. hold that for your, why hold that just for yourself and give the larger trucking companies the advantage of, well, they have budgets that allow them to have data and technology to buy better, spend better, run better. If you know something that can help another small business, why not? Yeah. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I love that. Uh, Bob, do you have any questions? So, not, like, I'm kind of curious. So when you started, how how did you guys get the idea to, like, start it? So you saw that there was a... um like a need for it so you saw the paperwork right and then you just wanted to reach out to to the small carriers or how did that work yeah nobody everybody seemed to say that they couldn't get anyone on the phone um and we thought this is you know money's personal and when you need to get someone on the phone and you want to get paid and as the carriers first of all on the brokerage side which I should say early on in this podcast the two companies are completely separate I think for the longest time, everybody thought that Nolan Transportation Group owned yeah, I didn't OTR. Even, yeah, I didn't yeah. even know OTR was part. Well, I didn't even know until now that OTR kind of started with like Nolan, you know. But yes. Yeah. So Kevin Nolan, you know, he's incredible. He's got, you know, an amazing vision for, um, you know, the, the ecosystem of trucking and how it all works and the success of it. But he is, you know, he he's part of that. Hey, if we're say we're going to do something, we're going to get it done. And I think that was something he recognized too, is that in order to build the brokerage, you had to have the carriers that were willing to run your freight. And in order yeah. to have the carriers that were willing to run your freight, you got to be able to pay them, right? So there was also the idea that OTR would be able to help float some of this cash to get the carriers paid more quickly. You know, um, and at that time, like we were going to friends and family to help invest in this idea of OTR capital. So it had to work because if it didn't, that was Kevin's name and reputation on the line. Like, you know, if we brought on more trucking companies and needed more capital to buy those invoices that day, like we were making phone calls, you know, to to say, hey, we've got to purchase this. So it had to work. We had to make sure we were buying good. We had to make sure. So we were we were really invested in the clients themselves. But yeah, Bob, to, to answer your question, like we just recognized that. The carriers were working with other factors and we were asking them, but what, why are you, why are you not calling your factoring company about this? Why are you not? And they were like, I can't get anybody on the phone. Yeah. Or, you know, they didn't pay me this detention that I think I'm owed. Or what about that layover? And just recognizing that they were so underserved. And so, you know, it was an easy, at the time it was a, it was sort of, just here's a great opportunity to get involved in the business of cash flow and the back office solutions for the owner operator who really doesn't know how to build broker every different broker and who to call. And if there's an issue, like how to get it resolved. Yeah. Hey, we're not a financial company that's trying to do trucking. We're a trucking company that's trying to do financial solutions. It gave us a whole different advantage. Nice. So back back in 2011, what were like some of the biggest because my point is like everyone knows of factoring companies now, you know, there's the big ones and everybody kind of talks about it. And it's it's all pretty open, kind of what you said, you know, because back then I feel like everybody kept the secrets to themselves. Nobody knew what was really going on. So back in 2011, what were like the I guess the bigger factoring companies back then? What did you see all the owner operators using back then? Yeah, so they were using, um, first of all, they were using programs like recourse programs. They were being taken advantage of there where if if something didn't, you know, get paid back in 45 days, the factoring company would just charge it back. And they would charge it back without calling or saying anything, you know. So now, not only is the owner operator getting hit with a chargeback, but probably not even being told that they're going to be hit with it at all. 
the factoring rates were crazy. They were, you know, I think in the yeah. seven, eight, nine percent oh, wow. range. When yeah, we I first started, um, I'll tell you, when we first started and we came in, we were selling at like five percent, and that was undercutting the market. People were like, wow. Who are these crazy, you know, who are yeah. these crazy idiots trying yeah. to sell at five percent? They thought that was crazy 12 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, and so and so we were tr truly coming in and saying we're going to offer the first non-recourse, meaning unless, you know, like we are not charging back that invoice once we buy it. And so are we're going to charge you back recourse right now. Uh, some. So it's, you know, we still say we're true non-recourse because other factoring companies will say, yeah, we're non-recourse, too. But when you read the fine print, they're non-recourse yeah. to the point that at 60 days, they're still charging it back or. They're non recourse, you know, um, they still want to charge minimums or or they'll find ways to sort of fee that. And like we'll break it down and say exactly what it is. We're non recourse. We are, you know, we're not going to charge you. We don't have minimums. We're not going to charge you um, for fees that, you know, we, we don't disclose. And really, those are just the payment fees that we have to fund the, the invoice itself. We try to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible for all of the carriers. Um, and that was a big differentiator back then. It was fee. It was accessibility. Like I said, um, yeah. at that time, nobody could get anyone on the phone. So we were the first factoring company to come out and say, we don't have voicemail. You will always get someone on the phone. And oh, back wow. then we had um, we had a bat phone and, you know, from eight in the morning until eight at night, seven days a week, you could access someone at OTR. And we would, we would pass the phone on rotation. And so, you know, you would have the phone for seven days from eight to eight. Didn't matter if you had dinner plans or whatnot, or the weekend, like we were issuing fuel advances and answering questions and always accessible to the point where, you know, obviously as we grew, we were adding more people to the bat phone, having to cover weekend shifts, um, you know, so we could service the clients. But the biggest piece was making sure that, we were going to provide the best service in the industry and we were not going to fail as we grew to continue to do so. Um, which I know you'll ask me about challenges that we face as we grow. <laughs> so I'll save it for later. Well, I was, I was actually wondering, um, Grace, cause you kind of mentioned like the changes that took place in factoring over the last 12 years. Um, uh, and I'm kind of curious also like how you see kind of like envision the future of factoring being. I know that uh, OTR just released like uh, OTR Clutch. If you could kind of tell us a little bit more about that, but also just like tell us uh, a little bit more like what you envision factoring to look like, because there's a lot of changes that have taken place in the last 12 years, especially with the the, the rates uh, that factoring companies charge. And uh, to add on top of that, could you really quickly tell us like when did rates start to dip? Like, because right now, like we're, we're it's like a normal rate right now. Factoring. Yeah, that's a great question. But the, I don't know if I can pinpoint over the 12 years, like when exactly we took the dip. You know, we all know that trucking is cyclical, right? So, you know, yeah. and it's the same amount of effort to buy an $1,800 invoice as it is a $1,000 invoice. And so the factoring company, of course, would much rather buy an $1,800 invoice than we would a thousand. Um, so when the, you know, when the freight cycles are doing great, you know, other factoring companies get real competitive. And right now, I'll be honest with you, like, we've never sold ourselves on rate. We sell ourselves on service. You know, jokingly, I say like Gucci doesn't go on sale. And, <laughs> you know, you pay for a premium product and you pay for, you know, I grew up working retail. I worked in boutiques. I worked at Nordstrom, which is an incredible company where you look people in the eye and you thank them for your business, their business, and you walk the bag around and it's an experience, right? Um, yeah. Our clients come to us, they're owner operators. They're typically, you know, truckers are treated like the bottom of the totem pole, not at OTR. Like you are valued. We will take care of you. We will talk you through. We do not want you to have surprises. I don't know if that invoice is buying the birthday cake or the prescription medicine for your, you know, family, or just the tire to get down the road, the truck note, the insurance payment, everyone who's hired here, we make sure they understand the responsibility of someone sent us an invoice today. We've got to get it paid. 
Um, and I'm not saying we can do that perfectly every day, but what we can do is we can communicate that perfectly every day. Um, so we, you know, we came and we gave every carrier a dedicated account manager. My clients still call me. I was the first, you know, dedicated account manager for oh. our clients. And I still have an incredible relationship with many of my carriers. Um, and I love them and I talk to them and I know about their families. You know, in fact, one of our, my favorites that's been with us almost 10 years, his son played basketball and I watched his son from elementary school to middle school, high school. He then went and played at Georgia Tech. He now is interning at OTR. Um, these clients of ours become family um, and, you know, we want to actually have a relationship with them, but it was never about rate for us. So if you're going to come to OTR and you're just trying to get 1%, like, sorry, you're probably not getting 1% anyway, send me the contract and I'll explain exactly how the effective rate of what you're getting is not 1%. I'll send you my contract and we can go from there. Yes, <laughs> we can see please exactly do. Pinpointed, pinpointed to what my rate is because yeah. I'm pretty confused about some of the stuff for sure. But yeah. Yeah. Send it to me. I, you know, I love to break it down and to help people understand that, um, you know, it, it, and it, and time is money too. Like we always said we were more than just a factoring company many years ago. Now yeah. we have products and services that truly make us more than just a factoring company. Um, and, you know, Paul, you asked me about, okay, where do I think it's going? And I don't know where the other factoring companies are going. As far as we're concerned, we're already more than just a factoring company. Sure, our core business is that and will always be. But when we're thinking about how we're elevating trucking companies um, with technology with the ability to, you know, save at the pump with our fuel card, with the ability now through OTR Clutch, it's a banking solution and debit card that um, gives them rewards, which is the first of its kind. Um, you know, we have Elevate, which is a website, um, you know, and domain um, service that we provide. Um, this is a whole nother conversation, but Elevate, you know, as you guys know, presenting yourself to the brokers as an established trucking company, you're automatically going to be paid more. Just yeah. I think two weeks ago, we looked at it, it was like the carriers that are running with a Gmail, Yahoo, um, Hotmail account versus the carriers that have a website, on average, they're getting $80 more per invoice. I mean, that, that's just, you know, the, the numbers speak for themselves. And um, Elevate is a product that at $9.99 a month, you know, we will give you a website and email to help run your trucking company. So, um, but OTR Clutch, I mean, I, I, I do want to spend quite a bit of time talking about this new product that we are so excited about. Um, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a debit card and banking solution. We realized we have focus groups with our clients and we realized that um, someone said maybe a little over a year ago, I try to bank locally. Because I feel like when I go, if I if I don't, I have no relationship. I have no one to help me. I can't get anyone on the phone. I need to be able to go in and talk to someone at my bank. And so we thought, we're already paying the carriers. They trust us with their money to pay them. We're paying them into banks that, you know, are collecting interchange off of all of their spend. And the carriers aren't benefiting at all. What if we're the bank? Like, we partnered with Thread Bank, which has been in banking since 1906, FDIC insured. Um, they do banking. They're out of Tennessee. And, um, you know, we do trucking. So we created this beautiful premium metal black card, debit card, and carriers will now earn unlimited cash back. The, this open a business banking account so that they can run all of their business expenses through this. The reporting is there. There's no minimums. There's no maximum volumes. Um, it functions just as a bank, um, mobile, digital, which meets carriers where they are on the road, you know, um, and it's backed by the service that they know and love and trust so they can call OTR for all the help that they need. Um, there's overdraft fee protection up to $250. You know, we thought about that, like you're out there on the road, you spend and, you know, we'll protect you there. Um, and, you know, and now when they're getting paid instantly by OTR anyway, because we have a product called Bolt where we can pay them directly to a debit card, 
we realized we are paying tons of carriers directly to their debit card via Bolt. Why are we not paying them directly via debit card that we've created for them where they can earn unlimited cash back and get rewards for their spending? Um, they can save through this account. They can issue other cards to other people. Um, you know, uh, they can manage it just like any bank account, transfer money. So, um, you know, it's it's really exciting. It's already been received really well. We've already had, you know, over $100,000 just in a matter of days flowing through. Um, oh, wow. It's exciting. It's really exciting. That's very I have cool. a question about that. So you're saying it's a debit, it's a debit card, right? So it's a bank where I guess you have a debit card and you have unlimited uh, cash back on a debit card or is it like a credit card yeah. that you get unlimited cash back? Yeah. I'm so glad you're um, asking that. So it is a debit card. It's not a credit card. We're not going to check your credit. You're not going to have to pay interest on the card if you don't pay it off. It is the first debit card that comes with rewards. It is the first debit card, whereas you're working with, you know, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase Bank, whatever it may be, all of the spend that you have, you're just spending. This one comes how is with it worth it? How is it worth it for you, though? The 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 mad, though, mad thing, you know, as they say? Because usually, yep. like, I know how credit cards work, Um, you know, the they the, the the vendors get charged right and then that's how they get you like i guess a cash back so but yeah. a debit card i've never heard about that so banks collect the interchange on all of the spend when when people are out there spending right and they yeah. they use that for their overhead and to their brick and mortar well with this online banking we're able to obviously collect some of that interchange now um that is shared through our partner thread and give that back to the carrier Oh, okay. Nice. That's how it works. Yeah. Very cool. Um, mm -hmm. Are you guys going to have Are you guys going to have credit cards also with uh, the clutch, or is it going to be all yes. just debit card? So phase two would be moving into a credit card as well. But what yeah. we do know currently right now is so many of our carriers have asked for like a banking solution, especially with their, you know, eventually the reporting of hey, you know, these are my expenses. Um, we want to always help carriers understand how profitable they're being. You know, we try yeah. to help show them like, you know, the rates that they're taking, if they're above market, if they're below market, this banking solution will also help them understand their banking and their, their expenses and how they're actually running their business. Yes, we'll get into credit card, but this debit card also is helping them build business credit with OTR to allow us to provide them, you know, fuel credit um you know down payment assistance on their premiums when their insurance renews um that's something we help with as well um also utilizing otr clutch as a savings account for the premiums you know people holding back one or two percent to allow themselves to have that available i mean and bob i'm sure you know like how many people when they get to the renewal every year for insurance are not prepared for that premium you know um yeah. And so just trying to make sure that either we prepare them for it or we understand through banking with OTR and factoring that we are able to provide the credit to help them with that down payment assistance. Nice. I also uh, recently read the press release with Meadowlark, uh, who's an asset yeah. based 3PL. Um, they do, really think, around $140 million in revenue. Yeah. Uh, so. OTR partnered with them to secure growth capital. Uh, can you kind of tell us the details of that partnership? And I know OTR also has been helping other brokerages as well with uh, securing capital and with cash flow. Uh, how does how has that worked? And uh, can you tell us more about that? Yeah. Uh, so we've talked a lot about the carriers. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because we do help brokers as well. We factor for brokers. We offer quick pay solutions and funding for brokers. Um, you know, we partner with brokers who want to create additional revenue streams by, you know, working with OTR as their preferred factor. Um, so there's a lot of ways in which we can work with brokers. Meadowlark, that was an incredible partnership that we just formed. Mandy Roth, I have so much respect for a woman-owned business um in freight brokerage so rare meadowlark is a staple in the industry they've been around for over 40 years we all know the name and you know to be honest with you it's like you know they're a staple and you know i think it goes when we think about the market that we're currently in and how hard it's been for so many you know no one was you know 
they, they were no exception to the hard hit market. Right. And yeah. um, I think they knew that. And I think that they realized, Hey, we need some relief. Um, and they reached out and we've helped plenty of brokers over the years. That's the beauty of working with OTR. It can be short term and it can be long term. And with Meadowlark, right, they recognized, Hey, we need, we need some assistance right now. We need some relief. We need some help. We've got to figure out how we're going to, um, you know, work, and to get these carriers paid. And so, you know, we met the team. I know they shopped it around for a while for help. And there's just great chemistry between our teams. You know, they are equally invested in taking care of the carriers. They hit some really tough times. They made some really um, good decisions about how that they were going to broach where they were at and how OTR could come in and help. And we created a plan. And, you know, part of that was, you know, helping to provide um, you know, the relief they needed to get carriers paid more quickly. Right now, you know, any carrier taking their freight is going to get paid in 21 days. Um, you know, we can offer quick pay on all of their loads as well. And, uh, you know, we're working on the payback plan for the carriers that are still owed. And, you know, it's going to take a little time, but we're doing everything we can to make sure um, that we get them caught up and help get them back on track for the growth that, that they know that they can do and, um, you know, continue to be Meadowlark, um, yeah. which is, a, again, a staple in the industry and a, an incredible team, an incredible team that was just hit hard by the market that we're all aware is is hitting everyone very hard, yeah. to be Definitely. honest. And if I'm not mistaken, the brokerage factoring is a new solution from OTR, fairly new. And uh, you know, like, yes and no. Okay. It's, you know, it's not, it's not that it's new. It's just, it's, um, we are, we've been so focused on the carriers, right. That we know and love. And that honestly, it's been, you know, especially over the past few years, like brokers haven't necessarily needed our help either. Um, you know, I think there was a moment in time where I think brokers were so, and probably still are, although I wouldn't be surprised if while being conservative, there's been a pause. Um, where the technology aspect of everybody getting a portal and everybody, you know, that brokers are like, oh, I've got to, I've got to think about how I'm, I'm moving in that direction and not necessarily factoring. And I think a lot of brokers felt like, you know, um, does factoring mean that I must be struggling versus the way I look at it is like, no, factoring doesn't mean you're struggling. Um, rates are so competitive now that it's actually cheaper sometimes to use a factoring company to run your back office than it is to employ an entire accounting team, all the overhead of equipment. By mm -hmm. the way, people want raises. Oh yeah, you have to train them. By the way, they also want to take sick days and mental health days mm -hmm. and all the other days and vacation yeah. days. Meanwhile, OTR functions seven days a week for you. So you know, I always want to get in front of, um, you know, brokers and say whether they're small and starting out and just need help getting carriers paid, you know, more quickly than they're getting paid by their shippers or just saying, hey, hey you don't you don't necessarily want to front the quick pay, but we can and we do that really well. So, you know, yeah. partner with OTR and let us be an extension. Other factoring companies in the space, they only have maybe one or two offerings for brokers where they don't factor for them at all. And I love that we offer sort of a suite of services. So come in and like pick which one you want, you know, like how do you think that, how do you envision us helping you and like, we'll make it work. You made a great point though, about like the, if you hire your own accounting team, it's very expensive. And I, I get like DMS, I've, I've received DMS throughout the last few years from truck drivers and trucking companies saying that they don't, they don't, they don't work with factory companies and they won't work with them because they're thieves. They, they take their money. I'm like, you're literally outsourcing all of your accounting for literally a couple points. To me, it's hundred percent worth it. Cause mm -hmm. like you said, there's so much, uh, new, so many nuances that go into, uh, factoring and accounting and collecting money that to me, like I, I totally see like the need for it if I was a trucking company or a brokerage for that matter. So, um, I'm glad you brought that up too, because that's it's really true. Um, yeah, you, you know, I for years we've combated that sort of sentiment, and it's funny because seventy percent of carriers factor. 
So, you know, and the ones who don't or who probably say, ah, you know, factoring companies, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. Like you probably had a really bad experience. And quite frankly, I believe you. You know, there are there are some factoring companies out there that I won't name that I'm like, I to be honest with you, like they're they should No, name them. We want to hear them. Name them. (laughs) (laughs) I can't get in trouble with our legal affairs guy. I I I know. Like, did you really? Um, we'll, no. we'll, cu- we'll cut it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, there are some that it's like they will, the practices in which they employ, and there's no one, you know, there's no one necessarily to make them stop. In other words, you know, fill out our application. And so a carrier goes in just wanting to inquire and puts in their MC or DOT number. And they don't right. realize by saying like, accept that they actually just went into, they just quote unquote signed some sort of legal contract uh, or application. And now, now that factoring company is going to file a UCC, which is, uh, you know, trying to get a carrier out is, is terrible. As far as I'm concerned, if you're working with OTR and you think you want to go work with another factoring company, why would I, I, why would I hold you hostage? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I didn't do my job if you want to leave. So the other factoring companies out there that are holding these carriers hostage, shame on you. Shame on you. You know, we're here. I'm being held hostage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're going to cut this out. But like uh, I'm with RTS and they literally never told me that I'm signing a three year contract. So I was completely new yeah. with it. We had one or two trucks, you know, and they never told us that we're signing a three year contract. They just kind of made me sign it. And then when it came to like renewal or I was like talking to him. Great guy. Great guy. I'm not going to say anything. He reached yeah. out to me through social media or whatever. But then it was like, like when I told him I kind of wanted to leave, he's like, he wouldn't like kind of let me leave, you know, and then basically yeah. made me sign another three year contract that I'm like, this is just insane. I mean, we do have a good rate, but then. So we're literally, I have computers in front of me and there was a big bang and all the lights went off for a second. So I'm not sure. I think we lost like service and everything. So I think we have like no internet now, but basically, yeah, he made me sign like a three-year contract and I'm like under it now. And I was like, dude, just tell me upfront what you're going to charge. That way I know like if I should do it or not, but they have this like way of, you know, getting you signed up and then they tell you all the fees and everything oh, after. Yeah. So I was not too and happy you know, about our- that. I'll be honest, RTS is a good company and of all the, you know, ones out there, like, I think I they do lock you in, right? And they do have yeah. minimums and they do have fees that they don't fully disclose. Like, RTS always tries to beat us on rate. Like, they're just going to come in and undercut OTR all day, every day. But they can't service the way we service. So, yeah. you know, we have plenty of carriers that came over from RTS that all the time will be like, I will help explain the difference in the RTS service. And like, to me, that's the best testimonial you can get. But the companies like Tafs and others that actually like get put carriers in contracts that didn't actually mean to sign one just by asking for more information or, hey, I want to apply. I didn't sign a contract. I just applied, right? Yeah. Um. That's, in my opinion, like that's highway robbery. That's just- Totally. You know, and That's the crazy. fact that they Great. can so, still do that is crazy. And if we try to reach out to other factoring companies to buy carriers out, they just won't call us back or they won't return the calls. It's like, wow. no, your your client wants to leave. And they just yeah. we they just ignore it. And there's no like, one to like regulate that and say like, and so we try to, you know, help carriers understand that there's a association, the IFA, the International Factoring Association. That actually is supposed to govern and police the factoring companies. And if you're not IFA approved, that would be an indicator that you're not following, you know, guidelines. But unfortunately, carriers don't know to look and say, is this an IFA approved factoring company? Like, are they, they there's not enough education out there to be like, hey, do not fill out that application. Do not go work with this company. Um, they don't have that that stamp of approval. And so sometimes, most of the time, it's just too late. Yeah. yeah. Just too Grace, late. How, many, how many different factoring company, companies are there? Do you know, like, what's the number just the, in the in the trucking market, I guess? 
That's a really good question. I mean, I wouldn't say more than it. I wouldn't say more than 500, but I don't even know. I mean, there's not Five. a ton at all. And yeah, uh, I thought there I was mean, not I, more I, than a. I thought there was not more than like a hundred because I only know like a I few that, bigger ones. So in the beginning, you know, with C.H. Robinson, you had to be on their approved factoring list in order to oh, be. Okay. Yeah. And so that was the biggest deal to try and get OTR on that list. And Kevin Nolan came in and said, I'll give, you know, I'll give you a massive bonus if someone gets us on this list because we've been trying for so hard. And Bruce Johnson, this is for you because I, Bruce Johnson over at Sage Robinson, I found him and I pounded him. And, you know, and he, he did not want to add OTR because he didn't, you know, we had not really established ourselves at that point. You had to be a certain yeah. volume of invoices and you had to be, I said, well, how can we hit that volume if we can't get approved? And so um, eventually he added us to the uh, approved factoring list for CH, which was, which was huge. And um, the CH that was still a big have that list? Point. I think they do actually. Yeah. No, it would be There's, nice to see. There can't. There's, there's got to be less. You got to cut that out because I don't even know. I can come back and be like, <laughs> it's got to be. But I do know, like, you know, even in looking at there's because there's so many small, like, little pocket niche ones, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. So many. Yep. That, that, like, no, I don't mean no name because we were no name once, but like, you yeah. don't really there because as we all know, there's so many pockets of trucking companies. And so there's so many, like, niche, like, factors that will say, well, I do this handful. I mean, anyone really could factor um, if you have the capital to do so. Yeah. It's having the to expertise so. to know what to buy. Yeah. By is the way, fraud, big... fraud is rampant. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was actually going to ask about the fraud because, I mean, I know there's a there's a double brokering factoring company out of California, which uh, they dealt with the TriStars, the All-Star Transits. Uh, and to me, it's kind of like it's crazy to think that, well, these double broker scammers, they have their own TMS, their own factoring companies, like their own kind of like even load boards. It's like they operate completely like on that. So just like to me, that's crazy. And I actually wanted to because you said fraud. I know Bob was Bob, you're about to ask something. So you could go first uh, and then I'll ask. I, no, fraud. I was going to ask like so since there's, I guess, the big kahunas, right, or whatever of uh, factoring. And then there's a bunch of smaller ones because I have noticed there are a lot of smaller ones. People always talk about it. Is there like a consolidation that happens within a factoring uh, factoring world? Like do bigger companies or bigger factoring companies kind of buy out the smaller ones and, and work together? Or is it kind of just like, uh, you know, try to go, grow bigger yourself and try to grow bigger that way? Yeah, they do. They definitely do. They do. Um, you okay. know, yes. And we've looked at that ourselves. Um, and we'll continue to look at that. And, you know, absolutely they do, you know, because it's, you know, there are, like I mentioned, there's pockets of, of trucking everywhere and people have gained these expertise or, you know, there's a, you know, different, um, yes, they do. They definitely do. Okay. Oh, nice. And then another question I had, so you, as a factoring company, I guess you guys are the first ones to see what the market does, right? You guys have all the numbers right now. And, 2023 july how how do you see i guess since you guys deal with a lot of owner operators do you see a lot of owner operators kind of you know hanging up and hanging up their keys and and going off to work as a company driver because we see that from our side we've noticed that that there's a lot of owner operators you know that are parking their trucks and going working for a bigger company because they can't even you know as soon as they have a breakdown they can't even deal with it uh, from your yeah. side, do you guys see that? Because I feel like you guys would be the first ones to see it. Like, hey, I'm no longer in business. Do you see a, a lot more uh, more of that happening within the last year than it was like, say, two years ago? Oh, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Um, you know, and, it, and it's tough. It's absolutely tough to see because you also want to support the carriers and find ways to keep them running, which is Honestly, like that's the mission that we're on is how do we help carriers have all the information that they need to run as efficiently as possible and save every dollar and understand. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, 12 years in, um, I mentioned before trucking cyclical. So this is certainly not the first time we've seen it. This is not our first rodeo in a down market. Yeah. And yes, we see carriers come in and we see them churn out. We see them grow and do great things when the market takes off. And we see them absolutely struggle um, in down markets like this. 
The hardest part about the market we're in right now is, as you know, with COVID and truck prices and used trailer and equipment prices that oh, were yeah. astronomical. Yeah. And oh, yeah. people were coming into the market left and right to pick up freight yep. because you were making so much money. And you're like, you know exactly. what? I, I know that trailer is overpriced, but I'll cover the payment anyway. And mm -hmm. then yeah. sure enough, as yeah. everything went down, I mean, diesel went up for the first time as diesel went up, freight rates went down, which made no sense. Brokers started to squeeze everything. Um, carriers absolutely suffered. You know, we have been for a while asking when's the bottom happening? Like, is this the bottom? I would argue, finally, we very well might be near the bottom um, because I do believe the carriers and owner operators that have made it this far have figured out how to make it on what they're That's making. That's what I'm telling myself every single day. I'm like, I yeah. got this couple more months, a couple more months. Bob, couple you got more this. <laughs> you do. You, I, no, and I believe it's... that. So the rates are killing us. This is what's kind of happening to us. The rates are killing us right there. They're not paying well. I mean, they're not even, I posted a thing today. They're paying cross country $1.34 a mile. And they don't even understand you got to pay a driver 65 cents a mile. The fuel is 60 something cents a mile, whatever, you know, whatever discounts you guys get. And then you have insurance on top of that. You have the truck payments. Trailer. I mean, it goes beyond and beyond. So if you're taking that load, you're, you're losing money, you know, and, and that's right. what I don't get. But that's still, that's still just the beginning. You're driving on the road and you have a flat tire. That's 600 bucks right there. Like this week I've changed, I think like 10 tires. I swear we've had such a, I had a truck breakdown, a truck towed this morning. And I'm like, how are these, you know, people that are taking this cheap stuff? How are they surviving? Because I'm thinking as an owner operator, if you have a truck payment and you have, you know, and you're booking all this cheap stuff, you have one blowout or one something. Now you don't have even the money to cover that, you know? So you're like, yeah. I would hang up the keys if I was an owner operator and, you know, didn't have the money for it. So it's kind yeah, of crazy they, to see that. They absolutely are. Um, I think that the carriers that are making at this point either have their truck paid for or are on dedicated freight to understand that they, they can cover it. But so many of our carriers have either clients have gone out of business, they're sat or they're sitting the trucks, or they've had to cut back from, you know, four down to two. They've lost drivers. You know, everybody gave drivers a raise. That was the big thing. Make sure you're taking care of your drivers, right? Yeah. Now yeah. everyone's like, um, there was a reason why we pay what we pay because it's cyclical and like we can't pay that now. You know, exactly. we can't. Yeah. It's, you know, and um to your point, Bob, I mean, I could spend a whole another podcast just talking to you about like how do you we survive should because I feel for me it's, it's very interesting to see it like from from this perspective because I'm from a carrier perspective so it's it's definitely like interesting to see kind of what's happening in the market and I feel yeah. like like even to your point where you said everybody gave a raise you know trying to hire all these drivers paying a dollar a mile and then now it's like well you knew this was going to happen this isn't going to last forever so now they're all trying to cut back and and save their money but it's like it, it don't make right. sense so and as, as we know, capacity will level out to a point where then there's not enough trucks to run the freight yeah. that is available. I think we're all on the edge of our seat as to what is this holiday season actually going to look like? Is the, or is, you know, the U.S. people going to want to spend or is everybody going to sit in this, hey, like, let's be conservative. We may or may not be in a recession. We're going to have, you know. We're going to have a more conservative, you know, Christmas I think it's going to be the second season. one. Right. Yeah. But then there's a lot of, there's a lot of other noise that's out there. It's like, you know, 2024 will be pickup year and, you know, boy, I hope so. Like we need it. I, you know, it's, it's, it's funny around here. Everybody's like, ah, oh, it's crazy, you know? And, and I think to myself, like we've done this, we've been through this. It's about getting the carriers through this. What kills me is that carriers undercut each other. I'm like, don't be the guy that takes the lowest paying load. You know what I mean? That can barely yeah. cover. You're ruining it for everyone because hold tight, hold firm, you know. Um, and then yeah. also, you know, Bob, I would love to talk to you about like you you got to care about rate per mile, but you also got to care about revenue per day. Because if you're yeah, just chasing exactly. rate per mile, that's a super dangerous game as well. Yeah. Yeah, they totally. And it's funny that you said that 
areas are undercutting each other. I posted a thing on my Instagram yesterday. I have this big sign in my office. It's not, it's on where the dispatcher said, but it says stop booking cheap freight or something like that. And I'm like, yeah. it's simple as that. I, I wrote it on my thing. It's simple as that. Just say no. Don't take the, you don't take the cheap load, you know. Right. But it's hard. It's hard from a carrier perspective because when you have drivers, you want the drivers to move. They don't want to sit. And if they sit, you're losing money still per day, right? Because you still have to pay that insurance. You still have to pay uh, that driver a layover. You still have to pay for all this stuff. Like you might not be paying for fuel. You might not be paying, you know, for, for maintenance because the truck, the truck is sitting. But there's still a lot of expenses that you have to pay for, even if your truck is just sitting and not doing anything. So I think 100%. that's why a lot of like people commented on some of it. It's like, well, I still have bills to pay, you know? And it's like, yeah, if you've got, if you got into it, well, now you got bills to pay and you have to take the stuff, you know, to get it moving. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I, I, you know, we've got the OTR fuel card as well, which helps carriers save at the pump. I am so surprised that any owner operator would fill up at any fuel station and not be using a fuel card. Like if you are okay. not saving at the pump, you are leaving money on the table every single morning. Um, we have an email that goes out from our fuel team that tells us where the highest savings were across the country by one of our fuel card users. And we do that on purpose. We want everybody in the company to understand like our products and our solutions work. Where were the biggest savings? You know, $248 up in New Hampshire somewhere, 135 over here. <clears throat> that, yeah. the, those type of savings, like that's, that's a cell phone bill. That's a, yeah. you know, like those, 100%. those cover expenses. And so I say to all of the carriers out there, like utilize your resources. If you hear it, people saying like, oh, you should have our fuel card. For us, it's not just about, you know, oh, it's not just another product or service we're selling. Like it's no, no, no. We want you to have this to put yeah. money back in your own pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question. What? So uh, OTR, which which fuel or which truck stops do you guys partnered up <clears> with or what? Truck stops you guys work with? Um, so TA Petro, Ambest, um, you know, we've got the network that we have is huge. But the cool thing about the network is that in our mobile app on the fuel finder, you can actually plug in your route and we will tell you along the route where the best savings are. Oh, so, nice. you know, rather than you having to look for the TA Petro or the Ambest location or whatnot, we literally say, oh, you're going from here to here. This is where you want to stop. For yeah, business. drive 50 more miles and you'll get a bigger yeah. discount. That's how when I used to be an owner operator, you know, I would have the same thing. I would go on my app, but then I would kind of have to see like, OK, if I if I stop here, then I'll have to pay this price. If I keep going 100 or 50 more miles, if I can make it, I'll save, you know, 10 extra yeah. cents or whatever. So that's kind of yeah. how I, I how I was doing it. But yeah, that's cool. I uh I don't, I can't imagine being a trucking company and not having a fuel card. Uh, it seems like you save a lot of money. Uh, yeah. yeah, you do. It's it's literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I mean, it depends oh, yeah. how many trucks you have uh, yeah. per 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 when day. You, or per, oh, when so. you said Grace in New Hampshire is like two hundred forty eight, was that like two hundred forty eight from like a full fuel tank? Like that's how much you saved, or was it? Just, yes, 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 wow. yes. Yeah, that's okay. That's good yeah. to know. It depends on the state too. Some states give you like in Pennsylvania, the, the diesel is so much higher. So you will get like a bigger discount. It'll be almost yeah. like, you know, 80 cents per gallon or something. Okay. So you'll, you'll have like a huge discount, but then you go to like South, not South Carolina, but like somewhere South and you'll only get like 19 cents or 15 cents or whatever it yeah. is. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And it depends. It depends the volume you're doing too. So like, you know, if you're buying more fuel, they'll get you a bigger, bigger discount and who sure. you sign up with. That's right. Got it. On average, our carriers spend around fifty cents um, per gallon. Say fifty cents. Yeah, but all the way up to a dollar per gallon, and okay. fifty cents is like the pretty much our you know minimum average. So that's really good. I, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a it's an incredible fuel card. Like it's as competitive as it gets in market. And you know, I I wouldn't just say that to say that. Of course, I'm I'm biased, but you know, we push our fuel card because we think it's one of the best. Very nice. Cool. I would, um, I see. I, I like that. I just uh, we're with uh, we're with a different company. We we <laughs> fill up a pilot and a flying J. That's what I when I was yeah. like a driver. I used to like those um, truck stops a lot, and I know a lot of. So it's either like some packaging companies either work with you know flying J and a pilot, and then some just completely work with TA Petro and all the other ones, Ambest and stuff. And 
I I like the the flying J ones better for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I know like the other ones actually have bigger discounts. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Grace, I wanted to touch upon a post that you made on LinkedIn three years ago. Uh, you kind of mentioned the significance of like your friendships with the CEO of OTR, Fritz Owens, uh, Owens, Chris Ebel, VP at OTR, Tyler Dorch, uh, if I'm hopefully not butchering his last name, VP of Director of Sales at OTR, and Clayton Griffin, uh, Executive Vice President and CSO at OTR. Uh, can you kind of share like what your experiences were with like building OTR with them? And I know uh, that that post was, was from three years ago, but you've all come a long way uh, 12 years in. How, how has yeah. the, the relationship developed and how has that looked like? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm really, really fortunate. I work with amazing um, men and uh, women throughout the industry, but certainly having started OTR with these guys, you know, 12 years ago, there's, um, you know, there's immense amount of trust. There's the friendship is real. You know, we, um, we've been through a lot together. It's been a very honest and transparent and competitive and fun and exciting ride. Um, you know, we pushed each other. I joke, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you are. Everybody now, I think, is familiar with the uh, 90s Chicago Bulls because of the Last Dance documentary. Mm -hmm. But what's funny is I used yeah. to I used to talk about Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen all the time, like when we first started. You know, my dad is a sportscaster, actually. And oh, wow. I was yeah, I was raised by my um, dad and my uncle from the time I was 14 on. So I'm I'm very comfortable with men. I'm very comfortable with that competitive kind of, you know, team. Sports were always on at home for me. Um I was I played sports myself. I um but I work with these guys and I used to always say, you know, it's like the Chicago Bulls, like everybody's a player. You know, we had a Michael Jordan and a Scottie Pippen and a Dennis Rodman and you know, everybody's got their position and everybody plays a different role and you know, it's funny, Fritz is a Phil Jackson, like Fritz is amazing. Like he's just, he asks all the right questions. He lets all of us play our game really strong. You know, he, he, he's, it, we just, there's an, so much trust. We're so competitive and we've always been, um, you know, we've always been in it to win. And it's, we say it's more fun when we win together. Right. And since then, over the years, we've added so many more amazing people to the leadership team. Um, you know, uh, our CFO, Peter Corgan, our CTO, Drew Bingham, you know, Jeff Miller, chief sales officer, um, you know, on the marketing side, which has grown immensely, John Landrum, um, our partnerships team. I mean, Jonathan McCormick, like I, you know, Nikki Corrigan, who opened our Phoenix office and she's our GM out there, which is an incredible office. And they are, thriving. Um, we have a team of people that just, we're never, we're never done. I would love to tell you 12 years in, we feel really good about what we've accomplished. And you know, we're just going to sit back for a minute. Like, let's let this simmer. It's not who we are. I mean, we are, we are constantly thinking about what's next. This is still the beginning we are not just a factoring company. We're a fintech company in the trucking industry, making trucking companies better. And, um, you know, I've, I've just, I am just really fortunate to work with an incredible group of people. Wow. Love that's it. awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. It's really story. good. To hear. Yeah. yeah. We need to Bob, assemble our, uh, Chicago Bulls, eighties, nineties team. I, yeah. You know, <laughs> I it's need to hire people team like that you know just that uh, are willing to always you know work and, and hustle and, and grow together because that that definitely matters so a lot fine these days it is yeah. well you know it it is it's tough to find it's you know i don't know i think it's also you've got to be able to get through the tough times together and, and be really super honest with each other you know not every idea is a good idea yeah. yeah. And we have to be willing to like look at each other and be like, I don't know if I agree with that. Okay, why? You know, we challenge each other. Like I, you know, I used to play this, like I used to say um years ago, I would imagine Kevin and Fritz sitting around on a Friday night and being like, if we had to do it all over again and you could only take five, who would it be? 
And in my mind, I'm like, they'd have to say grace. Like, I don't, I don't even know if they have to say grace first. That's okay. Right. But I need to know I'm one of the five. And I think, you know, you come into work every day like that, thinking like, if we had to do it all over again, you know, am I vital? Yeah. Um, and that's the way I think we come in with each other every day is like, be, you know, like, we're going to win, you know, we're going to win. We're going to say we're going to do something and we're going to do it. Our partners were always like, wow, when you said you wanted to partner, I didn't, you, you weren't joking. Like, no, we weren't joking. If you're going to partner with OTR, we're going to partner, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. So what do you see? What do you see the future of uh, OTR in say the next five years? And uh, what do you see, I guess, from, or what do you got to tell, I guess, to the carriers or to the owner operators that are going through this time, you know? Yeah. I would say hang in there. Um, I would say it's definitely going to get better. I'd say, you know, um, the, the quote in my office, there's no growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone. You know, right now it's really uncomfortable and you're going to have to, you know, remember this for the better times. You know, I think, you know, couple years ago when it was so good everyone's like put the money aside for when it the tough times come yeah. because they do and you know we take the learning lessons from this and for OTR we will continue to expand on our product offerings um you know looking at ways in which to help carriers negotiate better so they don't have to be the one that's taking that low paying freight um, you know, the the OTR clutch evolving from the debit card banking solution. Yes, we'll offer credit cards, you know, figuring out the down payment premiums and continuing to offer business credit, bookkeeping services. Um, you know, we have a lot of great ideas in the works, but typically we don't decide them for ourselves. We go to the clients, we have the focus groups, we ask them what they want and need, and we build from there. And we're also just working with partners out there. You know, um, we are not one of these, hey, we work in a silo. OTR is only successful by doing OTR. You know, if it benefits the carrier and the partnership makes sense, we want to do it. Um, you know, and we're just, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to, uh, you know, the next five years for sure and continuing to be an industry leader in this space, helping carriers prevent fraud helping carriers, you know, be more successful on their profitability, finding drivers, um, getting the best insurance quotes, like you name it, we're in it. We are um, totally immersed in what it takes to run a trucking company and figuring out the ways in which we can do that better. Awesome. Quick question. Um, on your, I guess, factoring, do you guys have a thing where like a carrier goes in and searches a MC and you guys rate that carrier? Do you have, I'm, I'm sure you guys do, right? Or something similar like that now? No, no. Um, we do the broker checks so that carriers know whether or not we will work with a broker and whether or not they should run that freight. Um, but as far as rating the carriers themselves, no, it's definitely something we've been thinking about. The problem with that, Bob, and like, as you know, you hire one bad driver, it could potentially, yeah. then it screws up the MC and you're like, no, 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 no. Like I run a good business. I had a bad driver. So exactly. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so you, I think you I asked the question be wrong because I think I asked you if you have to rate the brokers, but I actually meant to rate the carrier. So you guys do have it. Well, mm -hmm. right. Oh, you reverse it again. To, to yeah, see I reverse the it again. Yeah. 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 If the yeah. brokers are qualified, so you guys rate yeah. the brokers, right? We rate the brokers. You know, and I, I, I should say this too, as far as like, you know, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but carriers that like we've been tracking new authorities, right, for years and how well they do. And Paul, I owe you this graph and I promise I'll get it to you before <laughs> um, before we go live. But carriers who literally 12 months ago got their authority, they're 30 percent more likely, almost 25, 30 percent more likely to be in business if they're working with OTR Capital than those who don't. We beat the market for carrier survivability as a new authority. Mm -hmm. So, you know, which makes sense. I mean, I don't, you know, a lot of carriers out there have this preconceived notion, like, I don't think I can afford to pay a factoring company. And I argue, you can't afford not to. We're do yeah. you carriers who factor with OTR do better than carriers in market who don't. 100%. Um, 
Yeah. And, you know, and that's because we're going to pay you better. We're going to make sure we fight for your money. Like if there's, we're going to pay you correctly up front. You're not going to be waiting 45, 50, 60 days. Only exactly. to be paid a portion of what you should have right. versus a hundred percent of what you should have. Um, there's so many reasons, you know, and again, I, you know, I'd there's love to sell a, us all a day million long. Reasons but... to factor. You get your money faster. You can, I mean, you can use that money to pay the bills. You could use that money, you know, to do whatever That's you right. got to do to grow yeah. the company, to buy new equipment, to buy tires. So it makes total sense to factor. And especially with, with like we kind of mentioned about the rates, you know, what it used to be at five, seven percent, you know, and now what the yep. rates kind of are, it, yeah, it, yeah. it don't make like it, it makes total sense to do it. So definitely. Yep. Uh, I'm just to wrap up here, uh, Grace, I'm curious if you could kind of tell us uh, some like some of the roadblocks that you had along the journey. And I know that right now, like there's a lot of fraud going on in the industry. Uh, how is OTR helping carriers kind of like, I guess, uh, you know, not get involved or get scammed uh, in like those kinds of situations. Yeah, you know, um, so that's two parts of the fraud piece first. I'd say, you know, I can't give away our tips and tricks and the secret sauce, but nobody, you know, we can detect fraud after all these years. There's some obviously bad actors in the market. You know, you mentioned um, Southern, there's Southern California is a, yeah. a nice little hot spot for some of that activity. And um, you get to a point where you can begin to spot how they do the fraud. And, um, you know, we're looking at constantly, like, this is why with the broker checks and we say to carriers, like, don't just run any freight. And quite frankly, if the rate's too good to be true, it probably is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, you know, assessing those brokers up front, um, finding the pockets, um, over communicating internally across our collections, credit, operations, our legal teams, um, sharing information, you know, with others in market, you know, at this point, like, I think technology, you know, 12 years ago was so minimal in the industry. And as I mentioned, when, when things got good over COVID, for logistics, freight brokers and everyone else, they started to really invest in technology. And that's a wonderful thing. But at the same time, that provides more exposure for more bad actors to figure out, did you build it right? And did you build it with the right security? And how much information can I pull from you now? And yeah. I think we're all seeing that and trying to combat mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's just, you know, luckily, um, you know, we've, we've, we've just gotten really, really smart about that. Um, I think some of the challenges that we face um, separate from fraud as we've grown. You know, COVID obviously created the work from home, um, you know, phenomenon. Um, everybody went home because they had to. And, you know, um, we're located in Georgia, which as many know, is a little bit um, more open than some of the rest of the country. You know, um, our office at, at one point early on, it was completely volunteer and um, you know, as as people were able to come back, they could. Um, we kept it very safe and, and we put the right protocols in place. But as we could come back and as it became safer to do so, we did put an emphasis on, hey, we would love for people to be back in a hybrid fashion. And the reason why we do that is because we think it provides us with competitive edge. You know, we yeah. are constantly, as I mentioned, thinking about the next things that we want to do, working together, training, hiring, you know, just to be able to pop in someone's office and be like, Hey, what do you think about this? You know, what do you think about that versus booking a zoom? Like, I'm sorry, but I do believe that there's incredible immense value in being able to huddle around the coffee machine and have that conversation. Totally. I do think that there is a mental Yeah, and I'm sorry that we're having ability. we're having to record this over Zoom instead of Paul coming and us yeah. going to Atlanta three hours. Why are we we'll not together? Office. We'll have to do a part <laughs> two in Atlanta. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I would love. To, I would love to. I mean, you know, we are. I just think there is the energy and the you know um, collaboration that you get in person and the way we all can get amped up and fired up. And believe me, I mean, I I have a six year old. I um you know, flexibility is, is really, really important too. So we do have a hybrid model, 
But for the most part, like we're going to tell you all day long, like our leadership team is here, you know, most days every day um, because we are constantly evolving. We want to be agile and adaptable and pivot when we have to. And we do that best when we're all together. Nice. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. Totally. Great. This was awesome. Yeah. Grace, yes. it was nice meeting you. I think we should wrap it up because I got to go dispatch some trucks and talk to some okay. drivers. I got a bunch of calls. So. Bob, you're awesome. Paul, thank you so much. Let's do it again um, together. You, like Next time we're all in the same place, we'll, we'll do it together. We will. We will. Yeah, next time okay. Paul comes to America, we'll we'll show up at the Atlanta office. <laughs> and you then, are welcome um, anytime. We, we've got a studio. Yeah, and then maybe so if, if you don't mind or if you if you have someone, I it, it would be nice to send over actually my contract because I would want like a different, you know, um, look at it to see what yeah. you guys think about it. Bob, and send what... it to me. I'll break it down for you. Yeah. Okay. Happy. I'll get yeah. it. I'll get, oh, I have your email. I'll, I'll get it um, downloaded and send it over to you and see what you think about it. Cause I would love to know. Cause I'm learning, like it, I'm, I've only been, we've had our trucking company for three years. So I'm still learning like uh -huh. a lot of stuff. You know, I, I've been in the business for 10 years, but a lot of this stuff is like completely new to me. So I'm like yeah. trying to learn as I go. And these podcasts have been crazy helpful to me so yeah i love it that's awesome you guys are great yeah. thank you so much for having me i appreciate the opportunity thank you for coming on grace no problem yeah. all right thanks Grace. Bye. Yep. Take care. Care, thanks for tuning in to the daily freight caviar podcast if you enjoyed the podcast or if you didn't leave a review let me know what you think i appreciate any feedback if you'd like to have more freight caviar content go to freightcaviar.com and subscribe to my email newsletter